Since we're getting close to a festival of Pesach every day, we have several lachot in regard to Pesach. I would like to begin with um, history of Passover. Um, when it's come to Korban Pesach, sacrificial offering of Passover, the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvot tells us that it was a time that the, uh, the Jewish people gathered together in the Beit HaMikdash on the eve of Passover. They prepared a special uh, Paschal offering that was specifically in the eve of Passover. And during the time of the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, the Omer, um, a measure of harvest um, grain from barley of the first harvest was brought to the uh, Temple, to Beit HaMikdash. And that was um, on the second day of Passover. That's the idea of, of recounting the Omer. Um, and, and the Korban Pesach was... Um, um, have a second choice, second chance, sorry, which is the first one was the eve of the um, 14 of Nisan, but then one who is far away from Beit HaMikdash, so they, uh, it was, the Torah tells us in the book of Bamidbar, chapter 9, it was a second chance. Um, he can uh, do this, the Pesach Sheni, the second offering, on the 14 of Yaw, which was months later. And what happened is, after the Korban Pesach was sacrificed, People will be a group in family um, in Yerushalayim, in, in Jerusalem, and they ate from the lamb meat from the Korban Pesach, and later they will conduct the Seder um, there. That's a uh, famous Talmud Yerushalmi in the chapter 10 of Tractate Psachim. And the whole idea of um, eating the uh, Korban Pesach, the number of people from every family that were to eat, they are um, counted in advance, and it was only for the uh, Jewish people who are um, um, uh, uncircumcised, um, uh, 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 was circumcised allowed to do it. The Torah said specifically that someone who is um, not circumcised cannot eat from the Passover offering. Also, uh, the idea of matzah, as we mentioned yesterday, the, one of the mitzvot of Passover is the, the idea of matzah, it's the thin bake product that makes solely out of wheat flour and, and that um, did not have any leaven. We mentioned uh, yesterday of Yohan ben Nuri, the whole idea of rice and beans and other things. So that's not in the, any form of definition of matzah. Also, the shape of the matzah um, was originally round. It wasn't a, a square. And um, the, the reason for that, the, um, the Rashi said in Moed Katan, page 4, he said that, that they said that it was ugot matzot kilo chametz, that they bake unleavened cake, ugot, of the dough. So Rashi explains that the word ugot, it's like a rounded uh, shape. And... They said also that um, the, uh, the other reason why is the rounded shape of the matzah. So some said uh, the Shilot Vichuvot, the, the response of Yudai Ale in Orachaim, Siman Kufnun Zain, he said that the round shape is made um, a quicker than a square one, which is uh, why we prefer to do it when we're baking the matzot. And the matzah is a bread of poverty. And the circle uh, alluded to the... Um, um, cycle and nature of wealth and poverty in the world and he said also because of, uh, the Seder night always followed the 14th of the month of Nisan and Tisha B'Av is on the 9th of the month of Av and both days fall the same day of the week so therefore he said we eat rounded matzah to recall the food of morning which symbolizes the cycle of life again that's the response of Yudai Ale Rachaim Siman Kuf Nun Zayn. So with that in mind, we're getting close to our destination, which is the time of the freedom, the time of Passover, and the time just eight days left from the completion of the Masechta, the completion of the second tractate we studied together from the beginning of the Shas, which is tractate Shabbat. So we are about to begin page 148, and in that page, what we're going to study? First is the Melechet Boneh, building, and we explain many times that when it's come to building, it's not necessarily taking bricks and build. We are speaking in Boneh in derivative term, which is 
such as a baby body. A baby body, sometimes while delivery, while after delivery, while in the very young uh, part of the urge, early part of the development, there are issues that the pieces of the bond need to match together, etc. So the question, if it's come to Shabbat and it's not life-threatening situation, is that derivative for Melechet Boneh? Also, another serious question is um, borrowing either money or um, items on Shabbat. There are certain circumstances that one wants to do that. The question is when and where and how. I remember one time, it was a fellow I visited, um, he has a car dealership business, and a fellow worked for him, a non-Jewish guy, came in on Shabbat and he won some down payment cash for a very good deal of a car. And the question is, um, can, um, and he said, uh, I need to borrow from you a thousand bucks in order to make it happen, the deal happen. This was Shabbat. Can he do that in what condition and how? Is there any difference between Shabbat and Yom Tov? Also, another domain, which is indirect domain, but we go uh, straight to Shabbat, which is the taking interest in a certain way, because there is a very big difference between borrowing something and returning it with uh, some interest. As an example, let's say you uh, knocked my door on Shabbat and you said, I need grape juice, and I give you a half a bottle of grape juice that I have in my refrigerator. You come after Shabbat and you bring me a full brand new grape juice. Is that considering an interest since you borrow only half bottle? This is part of our discussion. Um, in short, just a word of introduction for those who want to dig deep, um, go to Shulchan Aruch Shin Kafchet 328 and over there there is a lot of elaboration of halachot. With that in mind, Let's begin our study. Last line of 147b, Ve'en machzirin et ha-shever. Itzuv in Ivrit, meaning when the baby is born and sometimes the spine is very small and some, we need sometimes to strengthen the various limbs in order to bring to the proper location. So here the Mishnah discussed that one may not reset a break in a bone on Shabbat, Amar Rabbi Hanan Bagdata, Rabbi Hanan said either from the city of Baghdad, which is the Babylon, Iraq, or some said the Gemara said in Brachot that that's applied to a Baal Agada, someone who's bringing a lot of moral stories. Amar Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, and now we turn to page 148a. Halacha machzirin et ha-shever, 148a. So he said that uh, either that it's a dat yachid, that it's only his opinion, or um, because it's the, uh, some dangers to the limb. The Mishnah Bura said in Shin Kafche that sometimes it's involved with the dangers. So therefore, the halacha is that one may reset the break on Shabbat, which was the, um, the idea of Shmuel. So now we elaborate that with the story. Rabbi Baba Khana Ikla le Pumpedita Lo al le Firkei de Rav Yuda. The great rabbi went to this big city of Pumpedita and he didn't attend the class of Rabbi Yuda. Shadri le Ada Dayala. Rabbi Yuda sent emissary to call him. Amar le Zil Garbei. Grab him, bring him over. Azil Garbei. Ata Ashkechei de Kadarish. En Machzirin ta Shever. So he attended and he heard that um, that they uh, the, that we not return we not reset the the um, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, that part um, on the baby on Shabbat. Amar le hacha amar avchana bagdata amar shmuel alacham machzirin et hashever. So we heard that one may reset the break um, on Shabbat. So Rav Yudah said to him, Amar le hacha na didan veashmuel didan. So both of them. Chana, Rav Chana is from ours, and Shmuel is also the same, it's a, a, a scholar from here. So nevertheless, Velav Bedina Gravtich. 
I did not yet hear this halacha, I did not rightfully drag you to the lecture. So it means that um, um, if you didn't come here, we never know this halacha. So it was the right thing for me to forcefully bring you here to the lecture. That's what Rabbi Hananel said. So the end of the Mishnah said, Mishni Frekayado. So if one was hand dislocated, so we may treat it vigorously, moving it into the water. Um, but, um, but the main thing is um, not to bring in a sense that it's full, fully for healing purposes, but you just kedarko, the way that you wash it, you wash it, and if um, it was healed, it, it turned to, to, to heal. So again, for those who just walk in, it's important to know what is our discussion. Our discussion here is when it comes to saving life or pikuach nefesh, is that applied to one limb or is that applied to the entire body? That's the upcoming discussion. So they said, Rav Avia Ave Ativ Kameide Rav Yosef. Rav Avia sit one time before, uh, before his rabbi, Rav Yosef. Shani lady a day. So all of a sudden his hand was dislocated. So he wants to know what type of uh, medicine he can uh, take now, what what should do now. Can he fix it, remove it? Amar le He said, what do we do now? He said, Asui, it's forbidden to do any type of medicine now. Ve He show him another way of, of treating it. And Amar le he said, it's also forbidden to do it. It's some type of simanei uh, refua to do the, the healing. So, uh, the Hachei day. So, meanwhile, um, uh, meantime, his hand was restored to its proper location and was healed. Amar le Rav Yosef said to Rav Avia, Mighty Ba'elach. What is your question? Hatnan, we learn clearly, if his hand or foot dislocated on Shabbat, lo itrafen betsun, and you shouldn't. Uh, vigorously move it, move it to the cold water. So it's clearly, if you do it for the purpose of medicine, that's forbidden. But if you do it the way that you do it anyway, and if it, uh, in a usual manner, if it's healed, it's healed. We said clearly that if it's a, um, um, we may not, one may not reset the break. We said that uh, we, we don't go by that Mishnah that said that you can um, um, reset a break. Amar lei, Rav Yosef responded and said, Kulu b'chad ha-mechita mechetinu, hechad itmar itmar, hechad lo itmar lo itmar. He said, um, where it was uh, uh, stated that uh, 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 the, 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 all who are this woven together in a single weave, which means... Um, can you, uh, it's just a, a uh, allegory, can you um, learn from what we learn in one part of the Mishnah to another part of Mishnah? Whatever we said that we're allowed to do it, uh, allowed to reset the, the break, we can do it. And whatever um, um, they, they said, so, so therefore the ruling of the Mishnah in regard to this located limb must be observed. So what, again, what we learn here is the, the big dilemma when it's come to a dislocated part of the body, um, um, is, um, we treat it the same as saving life of the entire body or not. That's the real dilemma. Hadran Chavir. We finish this, Baruch Hashem, this perek, and we start a new perek, perek, a Srim Ve Shalosh, the, the 23rd uh, chapter. It's called, the perek called Shoel. Some word of introduction to the new chapter, um, 148, um, um, Perak Esrim Veshlosha, the chapter 23. One of the labors is writing on Shabbat, forbidden labor on Shabbat, is writing or doing any type of commercial transactions on Shabbat. Therefore, the big question is, when there are circumstances that the person needs to have some type of transactions on Shabbat, since the Torah said clearly that we should not have transactions, and the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 58, davar, which means that uh, 
the reason that we don't do any type of business it's a uh, um, because the sages are concerned that the person start writing a contract on Shabbat which is forbidden then we ask a question what happened if the neighbors want things from each other and the Mishnah purposely bringing us something that it was common and it's still in many ways common to our days Mishnah Shual Adam Mechavero so you can knock the door of your neighbor and you said can I borrow a bottle of oil or a bottle of wine with one condition that you as long as you don't say give me a loan what's the issue of loan no tell me what's the issue of loan it's a transaction transaction so what's the problem with transaction what we said no, I'm supposed to do transaction and Shabbos. What like type of transaction? What's the, business, the fear? Business, what, what's the fear? Money. What's the problem? Because what's going to happen? Um, well, with borrowing, <coughs> there may be interest involved. Oh, you may have to write interest that. Interest is another you thing have that to you write must, a contract. Oh, you may have to write it. An agreement. Especially, imagine if they come and they take two bottles of oil Three bottle of uh, of uh, grape juice, a, a, a half a bottle of wine. You will have to write it. Down. Right, and and two potatoes and five tomatoes. Right. So here is the interesting Tosfot. Tosfot said here when he used the term shoel, one may borrow. So he said, stam sheila when someone is borrow, it's usually by the term of the rabbinic term is 30 days. Now, here is the point. When you're giving a loan, it's called lehotza'anitna, which means if I borrow $10,000 from you, I'm not borrowing yet in order to just to put it in my bank account. If it's in a business, I'm going to take this uh, money, let's say nowadays uh, $100,000, something that's more applicable, and I'm going to do some business that generate hopefully more than $100,000, okay? So when I'm returning, my hope, when I need to return to you, let's say in a month, the $100,000, I hope that several thousand dollars left in my pocket. So basically, when you are giving me the $100,000, i am taking it because I'm planning to make more than $100,000 when I'm returning them. So, in other words, when it's not a money, when it's a item, the goal is that when I borrow a bottle of, of grape juice, my goal is not to return the same grape juice with the bottle, I'm returning something else in exchange. It can be the same item, but it's a different juice. Okay? It's that clear? Versus when you talk about Shoel, regular borrower, it means I borrow a hammer from you and I'm going to return the same hammer to you. That's the general definition between Shoel and Love. Love is the type of borrower that returns something else. Shoel has to return the same. So the Mishnah used the term one who borrow, which does whatever issue, because we're talking about Minhag and we talk about Din. The Minhag is that some people borrowed money and they forget to return that money. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it happened to you, but it happened to some people that I lend money in my life. There is another term that is called the din, the halakha. The halakha is that I have to make in a contract with the fellow, clear contract that's stating in what term and condition I'm lending him whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So now it's Shabbat. So the Mishnah said that one may borrow jug of wine and jug of oil from another on Shabbat as long as one does not say that the word lonely. What's the problem of lonely? Because then is the issue of, uh, of a, uh, a maybe potential soon you see of writing a contract. Woman can go to a neighbor and she borrow, uh, let's say, a challah rolls from her neighbor, but she have to ask not in the language of 
lend me, not in the language of borrowing, because then it may turn domain of writing contract. Vime no mami no. If the neighbor of the friends, he doesn't trust him, because, yes, unfortunately, I assume that many of us face those situations. I can't tell you how many times, years back, I did it. I lend money to friends, and I'm sorry to say that um, those days that I didn't write contract, I didn't follow strictly the way that Allah asked me to do, unfortunately, I have to confess. And then I have issues. He'll say, you say, I'll say that. The Allah tells us, the Allah is for us. The Torah well, is for us. it's a friend, you're just better off giving it to him mm -hmm. and not expecting it back. Ah. <laughs> Much easier. <Yeah. laughs> Much easier. But the Allah, the proper decorum of Allah is right. give, but write the contract. Right, I understand. Mm -hmm. So the Mishnah said, Ve'ime no mamino. But if somehow the fellow is not trusting him, so what do you need to do now? One fellow wants to borrow. You remember the story of Judah and Tamar? Judah mm -hmm. was about to have relation with his daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know that he's the daughter-in-law, the Torah said. So she said, give me a collateral. So he gave her some of his belonging. That's the Torah said. So therefore, when you are about to buy something, the lender usually asks you, what is your collateral? Mm -hmm. And what I can put the lien in exchange, right, right, like mortgage against that mm -hmm. property. So vime no mami no. If he's not trusting him, maniach talito etzlo. What the Mishnah suggested, you should leave. He should leave his cloak with him, which means the person from whom he is purchasing, he needs to leave him something. And then the Miri said, but you shouldn't say that I am leaving my clock or my talit by you as a collateral. Why? Because the Ramat tells us that that's called Uvda de Cholda. That's the same as you're doing during the weekend. Shabbat is different. But you can leave it there. So it's like non-verbal agreements between the two parties. So what do they do? And he said that after the Shabbat, they make the, um, the calculation, the proper calculation between the party. Mm -hmm. The same apply to the eve of Passover in the city of Jerusalem that happened um, on the holiday of Shabbat. So what happened there? So that you need to purchase the, the Pesach, uh, Paschal lamb and you need to do it uh, in all, uh, if a person doesn't have the, the proper offering. So what did he do? So he go to the guy that was selling this um, lamb, and he said, Maniach talito, it's law. He leave his clock by the, the fellow, right? It's, uh, it's no other choice. When hotel at Pischo, and he take the lamb, the Paschal lamb, Vosei mo cheshbon l'achar yom to. So, right, after the festival, he make the, the uh, cheshbon, the account, the calculation with the fellow. So, which means they, uh, it's like the second day of the week, Rashi said. Um, so, the, you, you need to wait after the Yom Tov is over. So, now what we understand so far, we have several issues of doing that on Shabbat and Yom Tov. In one hand, it's <coughs> an immediate need. On the other hand, there is a lot of issues because usually we, we, we advise, we cry, whatever you call it a normal contract between two parties. And if you cannot write a contract, you need to leave something valuable in the other fellow. So that's, that's um, very common. Let me show with you just a small example. Last trip to Israel, I went to Israel, and I tried to... Um, um, I have a... Um, we have a small apartment in Jerusalem. So, after 28 years, you need to fix the kitchen. So, I have a fellow whom I trust, one of my students, years back. And I said to him, here is 18,000 shekels, which is about $5,000. Here is the contractor that's supposed to build the kitchen. I'm here only for a couple of days. Here is the deal. You give him 9,000 shekel down payment. You give him the other 9,000 when it's done. 
And that's my condition. As long as the job is not done, you don't give him the money. That fellow, unfortunately, was his relative. Hmm. And unfortunately, he took that money and he asked to, uh, to, to change it to shekel, from dollar to shekel, like $5,000. And the next thing you know, he gave him the whole money in advance. Guess what? I'm stuck now. Why? Because the guy, instead of following his promising, which again I made a mistake, not to sign a normal contract, because I was in a rush. So instead of doing it the way that he promised, which should be like three, four, five days, he took him two months. Mm -hmm. So my good luck was that he left, um, that fellow left a collateral by my son in yeshiva, he left a, a brand new pair of trillion which he tried to sell it to my son. My son at that time couldn't find his pair of feeling later when he right. found it. So he left it by my son. So now he, call, he called me and he said he wants me to purchase the, tef the tefillin he left in my son because my son couldn't find the tefillin. Now I said to him, but look what happened to you. You gave without my consent the whole 18,000 shekels to that fellow, and I'm stuck. I cannot rent that apartment, I cannot do anything. I'm stuck because the half of the kitchen was, was not built yet. And I cannot run after that builder because I'm not there. So this is a personal typical example that um, when you don't write a contract, even with friends, some, sometimes you're stuck with this. I learned my hard lesson all the time, again and again and again, that you don't do business with friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you do in general, you have to write contract. Because I fell to that trap, I can't tell you how many times. Hopefully at this time I learned the lesson. But mm -hmm. the point I try to say is, if it's a neighbor, the Mishnah said, and one neighbor knocked the door of the other, and they said, give me a, a oil, give me a, a, a bottle, give me a loaf of bread. <clears throat> So the issue is you cannot write a contract. On the other hand, you don't want your neighbor, especially if it's an observant Jew, not to have a kiddush over a cup of wine. Mm -hmm. or, 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 but if they want a large amount, if it's a large family, you live in a place that is a residential building in New York City, and you have uh, 30 neighbors, and you want to say hello nicely to them every time you see them in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Do you know the story they said in Purim about the fellow that came with a... Uh, uh, to his in-laws and uh, um, and the, uh, his friend and he went and he said how I get to you and he said when you get the elevator use the elbow mm -hmm. to open the elevator and then you, uh, when you get inside the elevator you push the number three on your left elbow so he said I understand that why I need to lose my elbow and they answered and they said because most probably you carry something in your hand when you come over for visit mm -hmm. so the point is Unfortunately, the way that um, people um, communicate is uh, the way that it's exchange relationship. So here is a Shabbat, and we want to do it right. So it's not a bad feeling. In one hand, you want to lend it to them. On the other hand, you don't want to, uh, especially if it's a very valuable, a lot of things, you don't <coughs> want to. What's the real difference between a expression of borrowing Mrs. A went to Mrs. B and she said to her I want to borrow from you versus if if, if she said um, 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 I just want to have it I just need it now because in both ways um, 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 it's the same thing but why the Mishnah requested not to say lend me so he explained as follows, they said, What did he say? The difference is that if you said, I want to borrow, so the lender will come to write down. If you said, can I have it? So, again, if it's a food or money, you return money for money, or food for food. But, the question is, can we do that? So, in general, there is a concept called Kniya Be'akafa. 
I saw it in the old city in Jerusalem with my cousins. They used to do it. It was an Arab store, open on, on Shabbat. And sometimes they used to pick up things. And the guy, the non-Jewish guy, after Shabbat, they, they paid him. He used to write in those days on a piece of paper what exactly they took from his store. So you need all of a sudden a, a napkins, a box of napkins. You go to him, you pick it up, say goodbye, uh, Muhammad, or whatever, and then, then after Shabbat you paid it, right? So the, the whole idea is, as long as you don't expressing the, the Ritva said, as long as you're not expressing a manners of borrowing, and it's not involved with writing, it's fine. So that's the reason why the sages didn't want to um, um, do it, because usually the, the lender want to write it in some place in order for him or for her not to forget that they lend it to you. Because, let's face it, sometimes it's not just one person. Sometimes it can be a five people that knock your door and ask for things. Sometimes even during the week, what happened between the two parties? One said, I want to borrow. So sometimes um, he said, okay, return it whenever you can. Isn't that sometimes happened between friends? He said, I, I need a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, well, g bring it back whenever you can. Mm -hmm. Or I want to take a hammer from you. Uh, when you uh, whatever it is, use it as long as you need. Bring it back whenever you, you're done. Ve'atele mm michtav. -hmm. So sometimes the lender afraid that it may be forgotten. So what did he do? He go on Shabbat and start writing on a piece of paper that Mr. So-and-so borrowed from him. So it happened, Beshabbat Nami, Atele Michta. So it happens sometimes that uh, a person go on Shabbat and also come to write. So he said that Amar Lei Bechol Loshna Ki Amar Lei Alveini, Loshna Ki Amar Lei Ashileini, Atele Michta. So it said that also on the weekday, there is no difference if one says, loan me or let me borrow, lenders are not particular about the, here's the uh, word, is the terminology, and the lender come to write down the term of the loan. So the same on Shabbat, Shabbat since only the expression that the person borrow is allowed by the sages, so halveni lo shaulei, min kramilka velo abele michtav. So he turns that, um, um, because he used this term, halveni, uh, uh, which means it's a long term, so um, they said usually uh, the, 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 the lender will not come to, to write. He knows that it's Shabbat. It's, uh, it, it, uh, the language is such a way that he's not going to write it down. He remember, and maybe after Shabbat he put it in writing. Since we said in regards to festival, as much as we can change. So in other words, you're allowed to do a lot of things that it's in between, as long as you make it different. Um, for example, you need to carry on Yom Tov uh, bottles of wine from one location to another. You can do that. You want to have a, a meal big meal with all your friends. So you allow on Yom Tov and festival to carry it from one. But they said it's better to do it in a, in an atypical way, in a Shinui way. Hane Nashe de Malyam Chatzbayu Maya. So you see a, a, an example that a, uh, at a woman that uh, used to uh, fill up their jar from the river on Yom Tov. That is the Chatzba, uh, it's like very jar of water. So why they did not change the way that they, 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 uh, they draw water from the normal weekly, weekday, weekday uh, procedure? So they said the reason for that is because Mishum de lo Efshar, because uh, it is not possible to change the procedure. That's what Abai said. What he should, what he should do? The Malian bechas baraba lemalu bechas bazuta. So instead of using a big jar, they can use small one. 
Hakamapshu beilucha. What happened is they um, they uh, those who normally feel pitcher should feel a small pitcher. They will thereby add to the walking and expand an extra effort. So um, um, Tosfot said that um, because it's a change the the status each and every time it's a it's a loading issue. The malian bechatz bezuta lemaliu bechatz baraba. Kamapshu bemasoi. So if they um, uh, they uh, fill up a, a large pitcher on festival, they will thereby add to the weight of their load. So it turns that they even it's a different than the usual way. Uh, the sages not require that one draw water in the uh, such a shinui in such a different way. Um, and the only issue is that it turns on the on the festival to have an extra effort. Just turn to page 148b. So it, again, remember, this is the old times. They have the well on the ground. They need to take the pitcher, and those ladies go down to, to draw the water in a very unusual way. So the Gemara said, Nifor Sudara, Atele de Ischita. When the uh, woman d- does that in an unusual manner, we should require a woman to spray the cloth over the vessel. So she uh, may violate the prohibition of squeezing water from the cloth. Why? Because if you are um, squeezing water, it's called melaben, it's some types of laundry, some types of whitening the, the cloth. So that's uh, forbidden even in Yom Tov. We explained many times the difference between Shabbat and Yom Tov is only something that you need for, um, um, to survive, like food and things like that. So, um, so they said the chasia be if she um, um, if we will cover it with the lid, zinin de mifsak Sometimes it's a, 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 a severed from the pitcher, and one will then come to tie it. Hilkach. Consequently, lo It's impossible to require a woman to draw water in other way. And therefore, they they allowed to go and uh, this woman will carry the pitcher um, um, the same way as they're doing during the week, and uh, women draw water on a festival in the usual way that they uh, drawing water. So again, they show us an example in the ancient time to our time. Now they have another discussion, which is So uh, again. The whole idea of Yom Tov, it's um, Tikkun Klei Shir. And the Beit HaMikdash use the instruments. We don't want the, the person to, to use instrument on, on Yom Tov. So oh, they're dancing, so they're clapping their hands. So they said on, on the Shabbat, on Yom Tov, uh, um, we don't do it um, in a regular way. How you clap your hands? You have to do it in this way, in a in a shinui way. So uh, the whole idea is that um, otherwise it's a leading to tikkun klei shir, to the fixing the instrument that used to be in a uh, in that time. But we see people that does that, and no one tells them anything. So they said ulatamich that uh, if you tell me that we should say something about it. <laughs> they said um, uh, a person should not sit at the entrance of the private alleyway and he hold his, his, uh, yeah, some item in his hand. Why? Because uh, he may carry from one domain to another. We see people do it. So, so this is a very interesting thing that when you see people doing something wrong, sometimes you have to come and then fix it. Sometimes is a situation that it said that uh, that if people does unwitting violation of halacha and they do it uh, um, um, unintentional, you don't want them from now on to do it with intent because you know that that um, telling them something will not change the situation. Mm. So you're just changing from having them doing something mm-hmm. beshogeg and unwitted, unwitted, unintentional to do it with full intent. So he said, leave them alone 
for the if they are told about this uh, prohibition, they may not listen anyway. So leave mm-hmm. them alone. So that's uh, very common um, be, because uh, you have to pick and choose your uh, battle. If you go that direction, uh, you maybe make it worse than it was before. What we are saying applies to the rabbinic prohibition, but if it's a biblical prohibition, that's different. Uh, we, sh- we shall go and do whatever we can. Uh, the Torah said in Leviticus 19, you should rebuke your fellow. Mm-hmm. So we should say something. If he doesn't accept it, then accept it, but we should say something. Mm-hmm. So that's what they try to say. They said, Veloi, uh, that's not correct. Loshna de Rabbanan, Loshna de Raita. It's no different between rabbinic or biblical. That to Sefet Yom Kippurim, for example, to add more to the fast of the Day of Atonement, De Oraitai, that it's a biblical obligation, because the Torah said, Veinitemet Nafshotechem, you should fast, Betisha Bachod Lachodesh Baerev, in the eve of the nine, which means that uh, before the beginning of the tenth, and we see people that eat and drink um, uh, before um, uh, it's dark, and we don't say anything. So uh, you said that they're violating a biblical t- uh, piece. Of, but uh, if we know that they're not going to accept that, uh, it's not... Uh, the, the, um, the whole point, the rabbi tells us that it's um, um, the, the King Solomon said in the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, Do not give a series of admonition rebuking someone who's a, uh, a um, you know, let's is like a comedian, like a mocking person. That he's uh, everything you make a joke, everything you make fun. So, so don't give him a, a rebuke because he's just going to hate you. It's not going to help anybody to do anything. So uh, the same here, just leave them alone. Also apply to a um, woman may borrow loaves of bread from another on Shabbat. So the Gemara said, Shabbat bechol shapir dami. If it's Shabbat, it's forbidden. But if uh, during the week, um, a weekday it seems well. Lema matnid in the loke hillel. So may we say that the Mishnah we not learn according to the view of Hillel that none. We learn Bava Metzia 78. Vechen haya elel omer alot alvei isha ki kar lachavirta at shetasen adamim shema yukru chitin venimtzau baot lidei rebi. Beautiful. So the Shulchan Aruch Yoredei Akuf Samech Bet the Mechaber said that when, let's call him a name, let's um, use uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Leah and Mrs. Um, uh, Rivka, okay? M- uh, Mrs. Leah, she's now uh, in need of bread. She need five um, large loaves of bread. She knocking the door of Mrs. Rivka and she said, I want to borrow the bread from you. Now, What's the issue? So there is a book called Chelkat Binyamin from Rabbi Binyamin Cohen, which I never met, but it's a beautiful book. The book, uh, deep, uh, Zoom In, Hilchot Ribit, The Law of Interest. And he said, here is the issue. When Mrs. Rivka borrow from Mrs. Leah the five loaf of breads, what is she going to give in exchange? Five loaves of bread. But it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be, yeah, it's a replacement. Replacement? Yeah. Replacement. So, here is the thing. If it's a replacement of something that you buy in a store, mm-hmm. so even it's a, the bread itself is a different bread, but you're not involved with interest here. But the value may change. I mean, no. Oh, value may change. So it's not, we're not talking about borrowing white bread and returning whole wheat bread. We're talking about wheat futures. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. That thing's beautiful. That's exactly what he said. That what happened is that it, when it's returned, the value change. 
Now let's talk about large entity. Let's say if Mr. Um, uh, Reuven borrow from Mr. Shimon a very large uh, um, amount of grain. And when you return, the grain prices went high or went very low. Right. Now what happened? If the grain prices turn from, let's say, a, um, a $5 a pound to six and a half dollars a pound. Then he's paying interest, essentially. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So they said, Vechenaya Hillel was very strict with that. So what the Hillel tells us? So he said, Lot a woman may not loan a loaf of bread to another until she calculates its monetary value, lest wheat become more valuable and they come to violate the prohibition against lending with interest. Clear? Mm -hmm. That's exactly the idea in Kuf Samech Bet tells us. So now we explain how we deal with that Mishnah because the Mishnah said that the person can borrow. For so they one pay back with the monetary value, so potentially it could be a smaller loaf of bread. Yeah, whatever it is, it's yeah. interest. We're not even allowed to but charge it. It's the monetary it. value that they pay back, not the amount of wheat. Yeah, 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 monetary. It's the monetary value yes, of the wheat. Yes, monetary value, thank you. Yep. So, Afilu Teima Ilel, the Gemara answers. Even if you say that the Mishnah is accordance with the opinion of Yilel, Beatra ha Beatra de Kates Dame ha Beatra de Locates Dame. So here we talk about the place where the price of love is set, while the, the other statement with Lel, it's a place that the price is not set. So what's the difference if it's set or not set? Simple. Yeah. If the price is set, you pay loaf for loaf. Loaf for loaf. Yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. If but it's, it's not, not set, not, then it could... Uh, then it is an issue. Then you got to pay back the monetary value. Correct. Right. Now we go a little deeper to a complication, which is distrust between two parties. The Mishnah said, Ve'ime no ma'ami no. This guy said, look, let's call him Mr. Gill and uh, Mr. Bob. And Bob went to Mr. Gill and he said, I want to borrow. And Mr. Gill said, look, I have a bad experience with you. How can I trust you that you're going to pay me back or return what I, I lended to you? Right? So, the, so itma, alva'at yomto. So now we have a, discu a d discussion um, if one need to borrow a yomto. And Khatam Sofer said that it's a huge difference between yomto and Shabbat. Soon you see how. Rav Yosef Omer, lo nitna litava. Rabba Amar nitna litava. Rav Yosef said, you cannot go and sue him in a court, rabbinical court. And Rabba said, or Rabba said, you can sue him. What's, what's the point? Trace a scenario. Remember we talked about car dealer? Let's say, uh, Mr. Uh, Gill, he owns a car dealership. And Mr. Bob, who for the sake of uh, understanding, let's say he is non-observant to say the least, he knocked the door of Mr. Gill on Shabbat and he said, I need a thousand dollars to uh, purchase a car and when I get it we split the commission because I have already a customer, I need to go to the auction and get that car. Okay? Now, Mr. Gill is observant of Shabbat. He didn't write anything. But he showed him the drawer that he can pick up a $1,000 cash from that drawer. Shabbat is over. Bob went, bought the car, sold it, make a big buck. No contract between them. And now, not just that, when Gill come and I want Bob to pay him the $1,000, even that money says, I never take anything from you. It happens or not? Mm -hmm. Happens, course, unfortunately. Yeah. Why he's doing that? Maybe because he wants to cover himself so you cannot go after him for buying and selling. Mm -hmm. Why he's doing that? Because he's evil, whatever it is. That's the way it is. So here is a disputation. Rav Yosef said that it was Davara Asu. You shouldn't lend him on, 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 on the holiday anyway. You did it, so what are you expecting us to do with you? You did it on the holidays. He didn't sign with him the contract, so what do you want us to do with you? Rabbi said, no, you can go after him, because it's still, he, he, he gets something from you, right? 
Jeff told you it was easier just to give it to him. <laughs> yeah. It's just much easier. Just give yes, it to him. Yes, but give it to someone. If you talk about small amount, it's fine. But if it's a large amount, I'm or it's a large about, business, <laughs> what? You know, I'm it's talking different. about borrowing something on Shabbat because they want to have a nice Shabbat. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but uh, here we talk about uh, money, yeah, or lending a large sum of money. <laughs> I can wait till Sunday. Yeah, like they say, if you don't have it to give away, then don't lend it. Don't lend it, yeah. <laughs> Well, exactly. I mean, that's how. I mean, my mom always said that is, you know, when it comes to friends, don't just don't even expect it back because it mm -hmm. just hurt the no, friendship. No, but by the halacha, by halacha, sign a contract. Right? No, I understand. Even with your best friends, right. sign a contract. Yeah. But she said, don't even just rather not make a contract. Just give. <laughs> it's yeah. easier to deal with that than than yeah, sure. ruin a friendship yeah. because someone didn't. Rabbi Yosef Amar lo nitna li tava. Di amar nitna li tava ati lemichtav. So Rabbi Yosef said that if you borrow on a holiday, you cannot go after him in the rabbinical court, because otherwise, um, the fear is that he's going to write on, on, on the holiday Please. that so-and-so came and borrowed from him. Rabbi Amar nitna li tavadi, Amar klo nitna li lo yaiv li, ve'ati le'amnui misimchat yom tov. So if you say that you cannot go after him, guess what? Mr. Um, uh, let's call him Reuven will not lend to Mr. Shimon a, mm -hmm. a grape juice or bread on Yom right. Tov because he he knew that this guy he hardly return anything and he figured out why should I um, give him now this uh, and people just have, um, stop giving to each other a, a mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. so he said no yeah, he can go after him even is no contract. So in other words, Rabbi hold that if if Shimon went to Reuven, for example, and he borrow ten um, rolls of bread, which has a monetary value, and even they don't have a contract, and it happened during the festival, the other party can go to the bed din and collect the the the, the value. if he's not trusting him, so he leave collateral, he is talit, or his uh, cloth, or something. He said, I don't give him a gift. I give him a gift. I give him a gift. If you tell me that, okay, because they don't trust each other, so one party needs to leave his, his talit, or his cloth, mm -hmm. by him. So that's the way he has a collateral, and can take it afterward. So I understand by the one who said, in that manner, but Eli Amart, so if you tell me that um, you can go after him after Yom Tev, so why you need to leave him a collateral? You said that if we take them and we make an oath between the two parties, and they agree that he borrow from the others, so therefore without even a contract, without leaving collateral, mm -hmm. it, it can go after him. So why you need to go to that? So he said, Lo ba'ina deleikum bedina vedayana. Oh, so typical. People said, is the Gmar said in Bav Metziah, we said, I don't want to go to court. I don't want to have the aggravation to go after. I, I don't want all of that. I don't want the, 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 the lawyers involved in the court mm -hmm. case and the time and the aggravations and back and forth. I don't want to, to, to involve. So that's the reason that he preferred to have him leave something by him. So even we hold that he can go after him, but still he right. wanted him to leave something. So instead of going to the whole court process. Mativ. You see why so many lawyers say that in order to be a good one, you need to study Talmud. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mativ Rav Adi Baravin he is, a, he is a, a very important Mishnah in Tractate Shvi, chapter 10. Ashoched et ha-para v'chilka b'rosh Hashanah. So he, he bring an objection. And he said, look, we study in the Mishnah that one who slaughtered a cow and divided it among purchases on Rosh Hashanah of a year that follow the Shabbat, sabbatical year. So what happened? So even during the time of the temple where they're already celebrating two days of Rosh Hashanah, so the first day was possibly the last day of the month of Elul. And it was a possibility that the first day of the month of Tishrei, so which is actual the day of Rosh Hashanah. Now what happened is, Ima ya chodesh meubar, if Elul was a leap, they meshamet, ve'imla ve'no meshamet. 
You see, what it happened to the sabbatical year, what happened? You have to give away. So now, it's a situation that the person stuck because um, you cannot collect it. And he bought, <coughs> excuse me, that's the reason, by the way, that Hillel uh, made the, the Proust book, that people cannot use and abuse the system and circumvent the system. You, you lend some, something to someone, and now we said, Shemitah, I'm not going to give you back. So they said, So if, if you cannot go after him, so I need to, to, to do all this Shemitah, uh, um, which is the cancellation. So they said, the, 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 Over there it's different. It's different because they they um, the first day of Yonter was in Rosh Hashanah, uh, but it's the last day of the, the day of the year. And the Tosfot said that after retroactively it was discovered that um, that it's um, um, the last day of the year, he can go after him and collect it. So that's the reason. But he said Tashma, which means that it's not for the fact that it was cancelled by the. Shemitah by the sabbatical year. Tashma misefa ilav eno meshamesh. The second clause they said that <coughs> otherwise it it's not it does not cancel the loan. I amar bishlamanit nari tavaru diktan eno meshamet. If you tell me that you said that the loan of the given of festival can be claimed, so it does not cancel the loan um, is understandable. But if you say that you cannot claim, why does it teach that does not cancel the loan? So the answer is, if the borrower give him the money, he may take it. So again, the, the, the whole idea is that um, people, again, using the system, or in a way abusing the system, um, uh, to, to take advantage. Michal de Reisha, so we derive from that that the first part of the Mishnah, that if he, he, he give him, he may not take it. Reisha צריך לנהל משמת אני יסף אלו צריך לנהל משמת אני יקרתה אני אחזיר חובש וידי אמר לו משמת אני if one uh, return that on the Sabbatic year, the lender should say to him, I relinquish my claim. Vim אמר לו אפל פיח אני חבל מנו משום זה וזה דבר השמיטה. This is the Torah said in the Torah chapter 15 that um, if the borrower said to him, nonetheless, I want to repay you, he may accept it due to the way, the, 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 that's the idea of Dvar Shmita. So, so the loan was made after the sabbatical year, it's uh, the, the, uh, the creditor needed to uh, not ver verbally release the, the, the one who is uh, owing him from his obligation, because it's a Shmita year. <laughs> that's really funny. He said, Rav Avia, what did he do? So he, he took a collateral at that time. Rav Baravula, he, he used to um, um, uh, do it uh, as follows. Okay, today is a festival. You, Mr. Ruben, come to me and you want something, take it. And then after Yonto, I didn't come to collect anything. What did I do? I, 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 I just go to you and said, Ah, uh, can I borrow a camera from you? <laughs> Expensive camera. And then, day later, I come to you and says, you know, you owe me, you came to me on Yontav and you took from me uh, uh, five loaves of bread. You owe me the five loaves of bread. And if you say you don't want to <laughs> give it back to me, I'm not giving you back the camera. V'chen, Erev Pesach. And that's called Ma'arume, they, yeah. they, they circumvent the system. They, they play the same game in both ways. It reminds me that the Hilim Yudchet, the Psalm 18, that said that sometimes with sneaky people, you have to be sneaky in order to get what, what you need. The Chener of Pesach, and similarly on the eve of Pesach, the story of Yaakov Avinu, it's the same with Esau. You have to deal sometimes with people the language that they understand. Mm -hmm. The eve of Pesach in Jerusalem, so when it's a Kurd on Shabbat, Amar Rabbi Yochan, Magdish Adam Pischo Shabbat. So uh, a, a person can dedicate his offering on Shabbat <coughs> So what happened is when it's a, in our days when an individual if someone wants to dedicate something 
sanctified something, it's, it's a machloket between the Mechaber and the Ramah, and uh, if we can do it today, Mechaber is more strict than uh, the, the, uh, the Ramah, it's uh, lenient. But he said that a person can do that on Shabbat, and v'chagigato b'yonto. That's what he said, that it's, uh, he can't pay right away, so he leave the collateral, the claw. Because there are others who involve with his Passover, so it's not just him. So since there are others who participate with him, bringing the Passover lamb, so that was already um, um, uh, consecrated from the outset. But we learn in Mishnah that one may initially register for an animal on the festival. So over there, you get used to go to him in a regular manner, so they, so it's like that one who registered it from outside. You know that guy, he is selling those lamps, so you, you go to him, you don't have cash, so you give him some clothes, and you said afterward we, we make the account. So since he, he know him, he can uh, um, uh, do a consecrated it uh, at the first place. But we, we thought that one may consecrate it, indicated that animal is only, being, uh, only now being consecrated. So they say, So it's the whole idea, the process, it's a uh, rabbinic. So therefore, uh, it's a uh, perform on Shabbat according to all opinion. Is that exactly what Rabbi Yochanan said, that we're allowed to do a Hagdashat Korbanot, consecrated of the uh, offering on Shabbat? He said, it's not what Rabbi Yochanan said. But Rabbi Yochanan, Mishnah. If you don't mention anything, name, etc., etc., so you go by the Stam Mishnah. And it's a Mishnah in the, in the uh, Tracted Bitsa, page 36. Utnan lo magdishim, velo marichim, velo machrimim, velo magbim, tumot masrot. Kol elu biyom tov amru, kal vachomer b'shabbat. We said we don't do any type of consecrated or take a valuation vow, etc., etc. All of this, you don't do tumot masrot on, on uh, uh, yom tov. And for sure, if it's forbidden yom tov, for sure it's not allowed for Shabbat. So it's a uh, contradiction to what we said earlier. So the Gemara responds and said, look, kashe, it's not a question. Why? Kan bechovot. There is difference between a time limitation of certain obligation that, that um, you have the obligatory offering, so you have to go strictly with the time, because um, uh, otherwise you you violating a biblical precept. Uh, the other one, the other korbanot, for example, chataot, uh, hashamot, sin offering, etc., that obligation do not have the set time. So one can therefore consecrate the animal after Shabbat. Now in Mishnah, Muneh Adam et Torchav ve'et parperotav mipiv avalo min haktav. So the Mishnah said one may count his guests who are coming to his meal and his appetizer as long as he does uh, so for memory, but not read them from a written list. That uh, the Gemara explained why. Mephis Adam ben Banavi al min ha'etu ala shulchan v'vash lo yitkamen asot manak gdula k'neged manak tana. A person may draw lot, lots with his children and family members in the table on Shabbat as long as he does not intend to set large portion against a small portion. And one may cast lot among the Kohanim for sacrifice food but, uh, on the festival, but not for the um, specific portions. And later the Gemara explained it. Lefufe Yenuka. It is permitted to tightly swaddle an infant on Shabbat, even if it's done to prevent his bones from becoming uh, misaligned. Uh, this is not considered a prohibited medical practice. However, one may not manually correct a child uh, verbage uh, until his danger, because it is comparable to building. That's the Rambam Ilchot Shabbat, chapter 21. Um, a broken or fully dislocated bone may be reset on Shabbat, uh, that's Shulchan Aruch 328, and if one's hand or foot was completely dislocated uh, from his joint, it may be reset on Shabbat. That's, uh, however, then Magen Avraham Mishnah said, 
if it is not completely dislocated and does not pose a danger to the limb, one may only wash it in the usual manner, and if it heals, it heals. Uh, we learn uh, also in regard to borrowing on Shabbat. It is permitted to borrow objects of food or drink on Shabbat. However, as the Mishnah teaches, the borrower must be careful not to speak in a term of a loan. If the lender does not trust him, the borrower may leave something as a collateral, but may not explicitly say, here is the collateral in exchange of that item. Also, even though carrying an object from one domain to another is permitted on festival, one may not carry a large load in an usual weekday manner, whether one should carry the object differently. Um, we said that um, um, in regard to lo mesapkim velo metapkim velo meragdim, Shulchan Aruch 339, it is prohibited to dance, um, clap, or make other noises that accompany or stimulate song and dance on Shabbat or festival. This is a rabbinic decree, lest one come to fashion or repair a musical instrument. However, if one perform one of these actions in an unusual manner, it is permitted. So the Rambam said, you can clap your hand like that, for example. Nowadays, people are permitted to do uh, these things because it is better that they do so unwittingly without knowing vi violating halacha. Some authorities rule that nowadays, since people do not generally have um, expertise in fixing or constructing musical instrument, uh, all of these actions are permitted. That's the Rama. So some say that is... Uh, and also we le learn about rebuking violation. If people commonly violated the prohibition unwittingly, we do not rebuke them for doing so, for they might continue to violate it intentionally. Uh, this even applied to Torah prohibition, the Ran said and the Rosh said, provided that are not explicitly stated in the Torah. Later authorities said that this halacha applies only to prohibitions that are not punishable by a correct. Uh, however, we do rebuke those who unwittingly violated uh, transgression, transgressions that carry punishment of correct, the Mishnah Bura said. How about loading a food or, a food or object? It is prohibited to loan anything that cannot be returned in its original form except for money. The rationale is that the price of the object might increase and the parties involved will violate the prohibition of charging and paying interest. In some, if someone did borrow such an object, he should calculate its value immediately upon borrowing it and repay the loan based upon the price, that price. Uh, the tour said, that when it comes to bread and other common household items, people are not particular about the slight difference in value. And uh, it's therefore permitted to give a, them a, as a loan, even without calculating the precise monetary value. Um, the market price, uh, if it's a, um, co a commodity has a set market price, it is permitted to, uh, to loan and the borrower is permitted to return the same amount that is in a commodity, and that Shulchan Aruch a, 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 a Yoredea 162. The uh, last halacha I would like to share with you is um, in regards to um, Chovot on Yom Tov. Shulchan Aruch 525. Loan made on festival, including food and drink, Magen Abraham said, are like all the other loans and can be claimed on in court. This ruling follow the opinion of Rabbah that we can go for that, and therefore, if one repaired a loan that was uh, cancelled by the Shvi'it, he must relinquish my, my he must say, relinquish my claim. Now, uh, it's prohibited by a rabbinic decree to consecrate animal or object on Shabbat or a festival. However, it is permitted to consecrate a Pesach offering or on Shabbat. Uh, in, in those years that we used to have there. And the last uh, one in that sense is one may not concentrate animals or object take a, a, a <coughs> valuation vow or a separate trumot or tight on Shabbat or festival because these resemble commercial activities. 
So you have to be careful to do it in a, in a proper manner. Uh, even um, in our days when someone gets the Aliyah in those synagogues that they um, expecting donation, they have a card and they put some type of, um, around the amount, a, um, a little clip. So that's uh, the rabbi permitted. But other than that, we don't do these type of things on Shabbat and festivals.